Beef is pies. Uh, we've been going now for over 20 years here on the Sunshine Coast. And uh, we're a family business, uh, not a franchise. And uh, we've now just recently opened our 10th store um, here at the opposite the Kiwana Shopping World and uh, we've got a whole brand new look, um, branding. Um, it's sort of like that line in the sand uh, of the change for beefies for the next 10 years. Yeah, life was busy, you know. We, we not only had a business, we had four kids and everything for us was, was, was all about growth, you know. We're busy, busy, busy doing things and, and it was all business. So um, prior to having an external partner, um, we didn't really give ourselves much um, downtime, you know, away from business time. It, it, it takes on a whole new perspective. Um, it gives you a chance to actually look at the bigger picture. Um, I'm, a, I'm a trained pastry cook and when you're in the business making the pies, making the cakes, you don't have, you don't have that time to re not, not only time but you don't have that thought pattern to be able to get well how can we take this you know this business bigger is you actually got less time and working harder for sometimes less who builds a business what would you advise me technician or strategist a strategist yeah a strategist builds a business while the you know the technicians doing the do busy you know making the dough, so to speak. Um, but it, it's the strategist that can really build the business to a bigger scale and actually working on the key elements that it's not, the business is not just making a pie. What's the one thing you did for yourself to sack the technician? I literally sacked myself from making the pies, going in there at the early hours of the morning. Um, yeah, it was sort of like the point of no return. Was it scary? It was very scary. And to, um, I think I think it was being comfortable. You know, you get so comfortable in. I could make I could make pies all day long, you know, and not really have to think about it. You've got that, you know, you've got that care, you've got that expertise, and you can do that really well. But here I was turning it into go. Okay, here I need to be a strategist. You know, the working on the business, and that was uncomfortable. I wasn't used to that. And, um, but as you, as you push forward, then the light bulb comes on and then you realise the potential where you can take this. And it, it took a bit of time to get comfortable with it, being honest, you know, it took some time. But yeah, once you feel comfortable with it and you, for us, it was, it was getting an external partner um, to help us on that journey. We've got mind shift number two, which is your business is not a business, it's a game. Mm. So, do you see business as a game? Most certainly. Look, in business, you're going to have challenges. There's going to be day-to-day -day things that come up. But if you treat it as a game, um, it, it just puts a whole different spin, takes the pressure off, so to speak, because you can put a lot of pressure on yourself being in business. Your, your game has how many uh, players in it now? Yeah, we've got about 180, 180 on our team. And, um, yeah, from our... Uh, juniors who work on the weekend right through to uh, our production manager who's right at the foundations making the pies every day. And as the coach of the business, yep. what have you learned about uh, creating teams? And I mean, you would have grown from only a handful of employees to now 180 180, plus. yes. What's your secret of managing a team of that, that size? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, well, we've got 180 on our team now, and uh, by treating it as a game, you put that, you know, you put your coach's hat on, and, and, and managers are coaches. And part of that is making sure your systems uh, are strong, are stable, to be able to, because systems basically free people. And if we can have solid systems for our coaches to be able to teach the rest of the team, then you've got that ability to have that constant, consistent um, processes that need to happen to make the business work. So when one of your team members drops the ball and does something wrong, yep. what's, the, what's your approach to fixing it? Things go wrong. Things can go wrong, you know, different ebbs and flows throughout its business. And, um, and when things do go wrong, we, we always try and look at what the system, you know, is there a system solution to this? Do we have... Um, 
you know, we first look at the system more than actually blaming the person. And that's not always the case, but in generally, if we can fix the system, then normally it fixes the problem. It's all about retraining. And it's been constant and consistent with the retraining. We don't always take the approach of that person should know. Sometimes, yes, that is true. But if we go down the path system first and then retraining with the, with the team, you know, 99% of issues are solved. So what would you advise to me as a you know, budding entrepreneur about this yeah. idea that I shouldn't be satisfying the customer? Yeah, look, satisfying the customer is, is obviously step one. You should always be that. But what we're looking at is wowing the customer, um, wowing them with service, with a product, um, and, and over-delivering. So you create raving fans that out there in the marketplace um, are sharing the story and hopefully enticing others to come in and give Beefies a try. You don't need a business degree. What's that all about? Yeah, well, I'm living proof. Um, I don't have a business degree. Um, I'm a pastry cook. But what I have learnt and got a degree in is getting more growth, more time, and more control. What's more important of the three? For me personally, um, more time. I think that's originally why I came on board, um, not to even mention all these other things that we've achieved in the time you know, we've, we've had an external partner. For us, um, or for myself, you know, time was the, was the number one factor. That's what I was looking for um, it, within those three, more growth, more time, more control. And once you get more time, then all these other things. We, I had no idea that, um, you know, for some of the things that we've achieved and more stores we've opened and a gluten-free pie, you know, that we've uh, got Australia's best pie for, um, two years running. Uh, I had no idea that was going to be part of it. I honestly came to it for the time factor. And then when you free yourself up and take green days, and green days is purely no business, 100% no business um, on those days, and it just frees the mind business that for, for what comes next. And you know, I don't know the answer what comes next. Yes, I plan well, but by having that time really, really helps um, in all those three areas, basically. So yeah. What's your take on uh, me wasting eighty percent of my day? Yeah, and when you look at it, it really, it really is because it's the difference between working on your business and working in your business and, you know, breaking it down into what we refer to as red days, which is being strategic, looking at high, you know, dollar activities versus a yellow day, which is, you know, where I was, um, being busy putting out fires and, yeah, still growing, but I suppose you create a little bit of chaos. Um, so by working on the right activities helps manage and all of a sudden you get better systems put in place, you get a, you know, like you get a great team put together. All of these other things happen just by following a, a red day, yellow day, and I think most importantly a green day. I'm having a lot of trouble with people. Yeah. What's your take on, on mind shift number six, you can't manage people? Yeah, look, it all comes back to systems. Um, good solid systems for you then to be able to um, train and coach your team to follow the system. Um, I think that's my take on in the sense you can't manage people because if you can't, if you don't have anything for them to follow or minimum standards that's expected in your business, then it's going to be a little bit hit and miss. It's going to be some days it's good, some days it's really bad and you're sort of like, what's going on? But if you have a system in place, then you know, hopefully you're getting 80, 90% consistency and uh, delivering, um, you know, delivering for your business as they're representing. Consistency is massive. I think it's one thing I've said for a number of years, I think even when I was on the tools, it was to um, be consistent so the customer knew when coming into our store, they get a beefy's pie, they get, you know, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, next year, it's the same good quality pie they get today as they do in a year's time. So consistency from our product side of things is extremely important. Um, to then follow through with the customer service, 
and you then have systems and I suppose McDonald's do systems very very well and we looking to do the same with delivering that consistent customer service. So if I was a service business, not a, not a product business, yep. how does that apply? Consistency from a service side of things. Now we're in the food game. It could it's a it's applicable to whatever business. Um, we have it with our with our phone. Um, message this is how we'd like you to answer the phone and you have a system for it so it doesn't matter if you've got a young junior as day one or someone who's been with you for five years that system still sets a minimum standard that you're delivering to the customer every day yep find new customers and that is done on a red day because um, that's strategic high level activity and as you know look no customers no business really so that that's a high level important job and that's where you strategize to um, you strategize your week and that's the sort of thing you're doing on your red day focus on on repeat customers coming back more often um, one way we do this is uh, a simple loyalty card and uh, you come in get nine you know by nine, get your 10th one free as a strategy, you know, rewards club. Um, there, there's many strategies that you, can, that you can put together to get a customer to come back more often, but it's key that you work on these strategies and as a, as a technician, you just don't get that time. So it's, that's where I come back to being a strategist and freeing up that time to work on these strategies to see what works for your business. So just on that, um how important has it been for the growth and the viability of your business to have focused more of your week on red day activities versus yellow? Yeah, well, it adds massive, I suppose it adds massive value to it because as a potential buyer, uh, if they're seeing you busy, busy, busy and they're going, I don't want to do that. And also create, you, you get a ceiling, you know, you hit a ceiling with, there's only so much you can do in a day. And if I'm spending, you know, 90% of my day, um, you know, doing, making the pies and, and um, all of that activity or putting out fires, then when you're trying to become strategic, uh, you're just not going to make the right, the right calls. How important is it for you to protect your personal time so you don't burn out, especially the size of business that you have? Yeah, massively. Um, we all know if you get, you get tired and you have issues, you don't, you don't handle things as well. Um, you, you don't make clear decisions. So you're, you know, reactive instead of being proactive. And by having that, that time and clarity, um, by, you know, working as, you know, having your red days, having your green days, yes, there's, there is still some yellow um, time in there, but it just makes your decisions, your decisions would just be so much different, I believe. You spoke about green days. Yeah. Green days have been great for you to get clarity, focus, and direction in your business. But yes. What effect has it had on your your kids? Yeah. On your wife Belinda. Yeah. As a family unit. Oh, um, massive difference. It's it's a key thing. We we um, you know uh, chase yourself, George, and grow business, grow, and the whole system that it creates. And, and I think uh, it's a good question, but I like to go down the what the system has created and especially the green days and get that understanding and then to see with the kids um, and, and that time instead of just business, 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 um, the smiles on the faces, the holidays that we've been able to enjoy as a family, you can't put a dollar figure on that. So that to me I think is the biggest payoff um, for ourselves. Yeah, the third, the third way to grow a business is to increase the average dollar sale. Um, one way of doing that is, I think we've all heard it, you know, with upselling, I prefer to like up-serving. Um, for us, uh, for us it, it's about delivering that wow to a customer. So sometimes we've got some really good offers in, in our stores and we mention to our team, if you're not offering those deals to your customer, 
and you know works out better value and everything then you're doing a disservice to that customer and and at the same time from a business aspect you're looking at increasing that average dollar sale so it's a win-win you're looking to increase your average dollar sale and at the same time deliver great value to your customer the fourth way to grow a business is profit margin so one way to to look at it is uh, turnover is um, vanity and profit is sanity and look at the end of the day that's what we've got to that's what you've got to look for and um, for us, we're in quite a price sensitive um, industry and as we've been able to grow as well, it helps with getting efficiencies on, on your buying power and, and your ability to make more with less. Um, when I say that with less, I'm talking from a time aspect. So um, we, we never detriment, you never want to detriment from your quality of what you're delivering, whether your service or your product. Um, but you know, it's having those efficiencies by being able to make more in less time. So the fifth way to grow a business is take more red days and more green days. Um, personally, like I think the green days should come first and uh, I'm certainly by no means perfect, you know, in the sense of you fall into some old habits, but you get dragged back and, and that's what I like about the system, you know, you're looking at it weekly and the green days really help you um, reflect on the week that was, also the week ahead, um, or the quarter ahead working in 90 days, um, 90 day chunks. And uh, then the red days is with that clarity comes your ability to, to think clearer and make better decisions and plan more and work on the business. So what I've got here is, is the Grow Business Grow weekly game plan, um, weekly game plan sheet. On, on this one bit of paper, um, I was even saying the other day, like if I, if I lost this, it'd be like losing my car keys or anything because this here is, I run the whole business weekly on this one bit of paper. This is crucial to how my week runs. And that's all part of the, the grow business grow system. Aim for progress, not perfection. Um, yeah, boy, that was a hard one for me. We have that minimum performance standard that keeps us moving, that we don't want to get so tied up in, in trying to get it so perfect that we actually don't do anything. And that's where the, the progress comes in. And naturally, by, and still keeping the minimum standards, you do not want sloppy work. Um, you you do, want, do not want dropping the ball. It's still a set standard, but each time as progress, naturally the product or the service or your business gets better but you can't let perfection stop you from doing anything. Yeah, it's um, a lot of the times your competition is your own self-doubt, you know, what's going on up here and, and, and putting a lot of pressure on yourself. I, I think it's, it's coming back to um, planning what your business does and do that really well. So from a, you know, don't think about your competition. Think about what you need to plan this 90 days this week, even today, to what you can deliver to your customer instead of worrying about the instead of worrying about the competitors, think about what you can do really, really well to wow your customers. That is different, memorable, and that you become referable. You know, fear is good. You've got you've got loans, um, directors guarantees. You've got the um, monthly commitments with your rents, um, all the different purchases week in week out. You take all this on, but what I find with, with fear and treating it as good, it's part of the game. So like playing footy, you might be overthinking and a bit fearful about what's going to happen. You go on the field and it all happens, that fear goes away. And it's similar with business as well. And um, I personally find it, yes, you have these you know, moments where it's like, oh, okay, and we can manage, we can manage that, um, those items, but you've I use it to where it helps you implement. And as we know, planning, planning, planning is great, but without implementing, you don't achieve anything. So I like to think fear is good from an implementation side of things. You know, with business, um, I've been through the three S's plenty of times. It's a stretch, the struggle, and then success. Um, it would be nice to be able to go through straight to success, but in reality, it's that stretch and the struggle that really makes you appreciate the success. And what type of stretches and struggles have you come across? There's financial, there's emotional, there's people struggles, there's product struggles. 
Yeah, yeah. There's, um, uh, yeah, from a financial um, where you are, there's not enough cash flow coming in to service the loans, and how do you how do you deal with that? Um, that's been one certainly stretch and struggle. Um, a, another one's been emotional. We've had you know a few personal circumstances that has really stretched us. That you know life throws you a curveball, and um, that that is another aspect why you're still running a business. Um, a, a stretch and struggle for us is you know. Um, you know, something not done right and uh, you've got to waste all this product or whatever it may be and it's like to go, well, there's a stretch and the struggle and then I come back to go with the systems with that, with that sort of stretch and struggle. What systems can we put in place to ensure that doesn't happen again? And so it's that mindset that you learn with having red, yellow and green days that you get to understand and you get to enjoy business. And um, that's what it's all about, enjoying business as well as it giving you more life. So what's helped, what's helped ourselves is with stretch and struggle as part of the business, as part of the game. And what I used to be was a rugged individual, so to speak. Um, I try and do it all myself. And yes, you become good in many f- facets of the business, but really what I've learned to fast track the business is, is have that, for us, is a Grow Business Grow boardroom program. Yeah, so it's that weekly mentorship, accountability, just sometimes just a listening ear to, to go through an idea or, or, or to help get through that stretch and struggle. And that fast tracks it so much quicker and it takes away the pressure too. It's not, not having to have all the answers. That's the thing. So when, you, when you're coming up with, you know, a stretch struggle situation, my thing is not having to try and think of it all myself. I go to, you know, external partner and talk it through and usually a solution comes really quickly instead of worrying about things and, and overthinking things. And that's what I'm, I used to do it. Uh, but now it's like, who can help? with this area we need assistance with. And that's where the Grow Business Grow program has helped me immensely. Some of the highlights in the last four years for us, um, I can't go without a ski trip over to Canada. We've actually been three times, I think, three times. Anyway, one very fitting moment was on Christmas Day um, with the family and kids. We went out skiing in the morning and um, and uh, then came back and I'm um, a bit of a basketball fan. So watching, and my boys are as well. So we, uh, we watched NBA basketball for the afternoon with some leftover pizza. And you know, like there was no pressure on Christmas day. Here we are in the snow, it was fantastic. All through that holiday, we had no contact with the business. The business was running um, as per normal uh, without me there. And uh, having that confidence and just being present um, was was pretty special, yeah. Yeah, some of the professional highlights. Um, and, and, and as I come back to professional highlights that we've, the last four years, um, I didn't know, well, I, I was here for the time. But what we've also achieved is um, a gluten-free pie. So my son, uh, one of my sons um, has celiac disease and a bit ironic, we have a bakery and he can't have anything. So it was in a boardroom, um, I think it was possibly my first boardroom and uh, literally by the end of the boardroom we had set a a target to make a gluten-free pie. I had no idea how this was going to happen, you know, because we have minimum standards and I didn't want to make just any gluten-free pie. We, uh, anyway, we hit the target within 90 days, uh, you know, with our team and uh, we delivered, the boardroom was the one to first taste the gluten-free pie. Um, Since then, we've gone on to win um, two major awards, which is Australia's best gluten-free pie two years in a row. Um, That was, uh, that's been one of the major highlights, um, being, you know, being part of the Grow Business Grow that I don't think would have happened without it. Uh, another highlight is home delivery. Imagine this, you know, meat pies through the post. Um, we, we came up with this 
you know, crazy idea because we were getting lots of inquiries about our gluten-free to, you know, Victoria and New South Wales and Perth and Tasmania and, um, and we're like, how can we make this happen? And uh, it took four quarters. Um, it took, uh, you know, a lot of uh, trial and error. Um, but we're now proud to say, still work in progress, um, but we're still proud to say, we're proud to say that we now have home delivery, um, gluten-free, we've got uh, our range available across Australia, and uh, very soon, as this is taped, we have um, very soon introducing uh, some of our main range as well. Yeah, some other, uh, yeah, some other highlights uh, um, during our, you know, last four years has been we've got uh, drive-through pies. So three out of our 10 stores have drive-throughs. Um, we've, we've touched on the home delivery. Um, we've gone from six stores now to 10 stores. And with the 10 store being a completely different look, which is going to roll out across our existing stores. But um, yeah, the new store there at Kiwana, new look, uh, new brand and feel there with the, with the beefies, um, which is Fantastic! We're very happy with the uh, the whole look and feel of. Uh, I think it matches what we try to emulate with our pies. Um, we, you know, look. We've won awards with our pies, but you know, our main thing is also as a highlight is hopefully winning awards with our customers every day. Good question. Good question. You know, because our our experience our experience with that for me was number one time, um, and. Having a system, that's, that's the difference that I found is, is Grow Business Grow has a system that, that has helped me manage my time. Now we can't manage time, we can manage our activities and that, that is what the Grow Business Grow Diary does. Um, for me, it gave me my time back, but not only did it do that for me, it also open up other doors and, uh, and opportunities within the business to grow and flourish. So as much as I felt like I'd hit a ceiling, um, by working on this, open the doors to now four years later, we've gone from six stores to 10 stores and th there's just a system. That's what I love about it. There's a system to be able to, you know, manage your week, manage your year within a business. I suppose if you think you're, you know, concerned or it's like, should I do this? Should I not do this? I had the same thoughts, like um, where I was coming from, I didn't have any answers. And if I didn't do the Grow Business Grow program, I shudder to think some of the challenges that we have been through if I had not been with them because I was so focused on one thing and you know, and you're overthinking things. But by having that external partner, managed to give us so much more. Even after we, we had their two days training with George and um, on our, on, before we even had our second day, we had literally saved ourselves, I think it was a couple hundred thousand or whatever else, just from one um, idea that changed the next four years, how we did business or how I did business. And it really freed me up so, um, I think like anything here from my own experience, I think just give it a go. Um, there's nothing to risk. There's actually more risk in not, not at least trying. Now I look forward to the boardroom days. Um, I, I truly treat it as a, you know, like it's a, it's a red day. It's a complete day out from the business, um, different environment, like-minded people, um, very supportive and uh, coming up with all different ideas and, and suggestions that's helping our business. Um, so the boardroom is a day, of, uh, um, a day I very much look forward to because I never know what, what idea or what we could be doing next that um, potentially wouldn't eventuate if it wasn't for the boardroom. Yeah, look, um, Grow Business Grow program, we, we all have our fears and, and um, concerns. But honestly, you can fluff around for the next 12 months, 24 months, however long it will be. And uh, I sort of think if I hadn't done this, where I'd be now four years later, um, you know, the, the fear or concern in, in not choosing an external partner, um, I, I was there. I, I was at that same point. But it's like, well, if I don't do it, what are you going to do? You're going to do more of the same? 
And if that's what you're liking right now, then I suppose that's your answer. But if you're wanting something different, and that's what I was looking for. Uh, mine was originally time. In the end, I got time, more control, more growth. Um, I don't know what that may be for you, but if you don't like where you're at right now, you've got to change. If nothing changes, then nothing changes. So if I was saying to yourself, what's, what's the harm? Give it a go. And uh, that's what I did. And, you know, four years later, um, I couldn't speak highly enough.